chronic latent infections would include herpes, vir herpes virus infections. These are large encapsulated double-stranded viruses which cause acute infection followed by latent infections where viruses persist in a non-infectious form with periodic reactivation and shedding of infectious virus. So the first one would be the herpes simplex virus or I'll just say as HSV. So the pathogenesis of HSV include, um, there, there are two types of HSV or herpes, herpes simplex virus, one and two. They would replicate in the skin and mucosal membranes at the site of the entrance of the virus. So how do we transmit the virus? It's actually through the um, through the mucosal membranes. So um, it will produce infectious virions and then it can cause vesicular lesions of the epidermis. And then finally, it will uh, spread into the sensory neurons, which would innervate primary sites of replication, and then would establish a latent infection. So here, just to zoom in, this is actually a picture of um, a pathologic finding in an HSV, where in there's a um, Caudry type A inclusions. These are Caudry type A inclusions. These are large pink to purple intranuclear inclusions which contained an HSV infected cells. They are consist of um, intact and disrupted variants with stained host cell with stained host cell chromatin pushed to the nuclear edge. So you can see the nucleus or the nuclear chromatin rather pushed to the edge. And then the herpes simplex inclusion bodies with eosinophilic intranuclear inclusions uh, would present as this one. So this is actually a high power view of cells from the blister showing glassy, because it's, it looks like a glass, a glassy intranuclear herpes simplex in inclusion bodies. This one uh, is a fever blister or also known as uh, cold sores and they are found on uh, facial skin around the mucosal orifices like that of the lips or the nose so you have a bilateral distribution sometimes you can have a bilateral distribution and then the um, the blisters would um, in histology, would present as intranuclear edema and ballooning degeneration of the epidermal cells. And then some of them would uh, present as this one, which is actually an ulcerated form of blister, uh, where in the blister or the intraepithelial vesicle had already burst and crossed over. So here we have the different... Um, associated symptoms with the uh, HSV. So here we have gingio, gingivo stomatitis, which is actually caused by HSV1. Like what I said earlier, there are two types of HSV1 and 2, but in this case, the gingivo stomatitis, it's actually caused by HSV1. And there is a superficial ulceration rimmed by inflammatory infiltrates. And uh, very characteristic of this gingivostomatitis is, is that it causes cervical lymphadenopathy. So herpetic with low, that's not so much asked in the exams. Another one is herpes genitalis. Herpes genitalis is more often caused by HSV2 rather than HSV1. So you can find, find um, vesicles in the genital mucosal membrane and even external genitalia. If, the, if this is transmitted in the neonates, it may cause lymphadenopathy, uh, splenomegaly or a large spleen, or necro, uh, necrotic foci throughout the various organs. Again, we have uh, corneal lesions. Corneal lesions would present as herpes epithelial keratitis or herpes stromal keratitis. The herpes epithelial keratitis is actually a virus-induced cytolysis of the Superficial. This is superficial epithelium. Well, the stromal is actually an immunological reaction to the HSV. 
and it will present as a mononuclear cell infiltrate around the keratinocytes and endothelial cells. There will be neovascularization and then scarring, corneal opacification, and eventually blindness. Stromal keratitis, blindness. So this is uh, more important than vibrohyl keratitis. This is under the corneal lesion. For the disseminated skin and uh, visceral herpes infections, you have those um, infections in hospitalized patients and uh, with cancer or, immu or immunosuppression. So it can be in the form of Kaposi var variceliform eruption, which is a generalized vesiculation. You see many blisters. It can also be um, eczema herpeticum, which is a confluent postular hemorrhagic blister. So you can see the blisters as um, hemorrhagic or uh, actually bleeding and has um, pus or abscess formation. While for this one, the herpes esophagitis, actually um, a fungi, uh, fungi form of um, disseminated uh, herpes infection. The herpes bronchopneumonia, it's actually gotten from um, incubation of patient with active oral lesion. So it's, it's from the intubation. While the her herpes hepatitis can cause liver failure, that's all for HSV.